Hello, I'm Anatole. This is my review of Big Little Lies Season 2, Episode 1, titled What Have They Done? And it scored 8.9 on IMDb. And before I begin discussing the episode, I have to make a full disclosure. I've never seen Season 1. I live in Vietnam, so access to Season 1 is a little bit fraught because of geo-blocking. So I did manage to find... Uh, that it's available now on YouTube for purchase and by the time that episode 2 comes out I should have watched all if not most of season 1. So with that in mind I'm going to talk about how accessible season 2 is for someone who's never seen season 1. And so I was aware of the show. It, it got a lot of publicity because of all the critical acclaim that it received and then when Meryl Streep signed on for season two that was another bit of another coup for the show another bit of publicity so I was quite aware it was coming up and I was familiar with the author too because the the book is quite well renowned uh, renowned all that all that aside it was actually the director of Sharp Objects who was the director of season one. I'm going to get his name right, so I'm, I'm looking it up right now because I don't want to get it wrong. I think it's Jean, yeah, Jean-Marc Vallée. I watched Sharp Objects and I loved the direction of that show, the way that the editing and the music and the cinematography and the acting and the script all came together to present this really weird, strange, psychological tale, mystery tale. And so I was expecting we were going to get, I was going to get that with season two. I'm trying to bring up, sorry, I'm not looking at the camera because I'm trying to bring up on my IMDB app the information for this episode in case I need to reference it. That's why I'm multitasking. So I was surprised watching the opening credits. One, that David Kelly is the writer for the show. I was not aware of that. He, he is a writer known for Picket Fences, working on L.A. Law, and then later going on to do Ally McBeal, which I loved. I did watch Ally McBeal. So that was a good sign. We're going to get some good writing. But then the, the, uh, the director, Andrea, I'm going to get that too. That's why I brought up the app. Andrea, Andrea Arnold, who has directed a film that I have not seen. She has directed Fish Tank. Uh, I'm looking it up on IMDb now. Apparently also quite a few films, including American Honey, uh, among others. So a director of feature films working in cable. All this, all this is good, but I was disappointed that Jean-Marc Vallée was not going to be the director because he had a very singular, singular style, which is what I really appreciated. However, it's it's not it doesn't detract from the episode. What I what so now uh, watching the episode, I, I realized quickly that it kind of is on two tracks. There's the mystery, uh, the murder, the murder mystery. The police are trying to solve a murder, and I, I I get that the women are aware of the murder and they're covering it up, and they um, and then the second track is the the intrigue, the backbiting, infighting between the main the main cast. And it appeared that the mystery was more of the B plot, and the A plot was the human interaction, the character drama of the small town in Monterey, California. What really, so that, that the mystery didn't throw me. That was, I, I'm familiar with that, even though I, I missed season one, and I only have a vague notion of who the murder victim is. I believe it's the actor from True Blood. I'm not even 100% certain of that. It was the the character drama that was difficult for me because it relied upon the history of season one. So that was hard. I'm trying to get who the characters were in more than a one-dimensional way. For example, Reese Witherspoon came across as very harsh in this episode. So if there's more to her, I don't know. Just what's presented in this episode, it was hard for me to get a sense of who the characters were. And then there was Meryl Streep. And because it appeared the characters already knew who she was, I was really confused. I, I started thinking to myself, was she in season one? I thought I read she was signed on for season two and was not in season one. I had to go on the internet to make sure I was correct, and I, I am correct about that. So that was really confusing. However, all that aside, it, it was not impossible for me to get into the show. Just a little difficult. I think someone else who is considering whether to watch this series 
because it's airing now from season two, I strongly suggest watching season one. It's not impossible. If you're like me and access to season one for you is very hard to get to, then, then just go ahead and watch it. Uh, because the first episode of season two I, I quite enjoyed and it's rare to get that many high quality actresses with the, the feature roles and then a good supporting cast behind them so and, and good writing so I do I do recommend it but it's going to be a little difficult that's all for now thank you for joining me take care and be well goodbye